I'm Mike Nelson. I was off the coast of Florida on a dive in the weightless underwater world. I was enjoying being pulled along effortlessly by a strong current. I wasn't diving just for pleasure. I was trying to discover something that would impress a friend of mine, a female scientist named Sherry Bishop. I was releasing dye from a special dispenser and checking the data on a new drift meter. With them, I was determining the direction and force of an underwater river. This river was part of a newly discovered offshoot from the Gulf Stream. By comparison to that great current, it was just a quiet backwater. But it was enough to push me along like a giant hand. I was losing it. It was veering to the west. As I picked it up again, it seemed more powerful than ever. Suddenly, I realized that I had found more power than I could handle. I was picked up and knocked around. I was completely helpless. But I knew enough not to fight it. I let it take me. As soon as it slackened, I pulled out of it quickly. I was now heading into trouble that made this look like clear sailing. The minute I got topside and out of my diving gear, I made for my radio phone. Oceanography was Sherry Bishop's biggest interest, or so she said. I wanted to report my findings to her right away. I put through a call to her at her outpost station in the Caribbean. Hello? Hi, uh, Sherry. Mike. Mike Nelson. Mike, where in the world are you? Florida. Uh, I'm working on an exploration of my own on a new discovery in the Gulf Stream. I think I've found something very, very interesting. I'm sure you have, Mike. Tell me, can you get away this week sometime? Well, I haven't even told you what I've found yet. I know, but can it wait until we can really talk about it? Can you get away? Well, I suppose I can. Wonderful. Oh, and bring some of your diving things. There's something I want to show you. Oh, uh, yeah, I know about you. You got a little job you want me to help you with, huh? Well, I am temporarily without someone to dive with, and I would like a little company if you could spare the time. Uh, let's see. Uh... Uh, take a plane out here in a couple of days? Uh, fine. I'll be tied up for the next few days anyway. Oh, yeah? With whom? I'm quite alone, Mike, but if you're planning on coming down, I... Well, I have to get myself organized. You're the best organized gal I know. A little kooky, maybe. Now, uh, I'll be there Monday morning. That's three days from now, huh? You meet me? Fine. Fran Parmalee will meet you in case I'm out working on something. She's my one friend on the island. Goodbye, Mike. Okay. See you then. Bye. It was perfect flying weather. I was on my way to visit the prettiest scientist in the Caribbean. But some sixth sense told me that I was zeroing in on trouble. My sixth sense knew what it was talking about. Uh, Miss Parmalee, huh? Oh, Fran, you. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, this is Lieutenant Campos. Perhaps you can straighten him out so he'll do something to help us find her. Senora, I have done what I could. Who are you talking about, Sherry? Is she lost? Disappeared. How, why, I don't know. Nobody does. When? Since three days, senor. Since Thursday? But I talked to her on the phone that day. I know. She came over to my place right after that. She wanted me to make arrangements for putting you up. Oh, she did so want you to like this island. But when the senora came here next day, senorita Bishop was gone. You no idea where, huh? Well, I haven't. He thinks she drowned herself. The motorboat was gone. <gasps> it could have drifted off. Maybe somebody stole it. We searched everywhere, by launch, by plane. Well, she couldn't have taken her boat out and wrecked it on purpose. 
Perhaps you can shed some light on this unfortunate matter. When you spoke to her, did the senorita seem a little sad, depressed? No, no, she was, she was in very good frame of mind. She was working on something. Something she wanted me to help her with. You know, if you can only get a line on that. It might tell us why she did what she did. It might help us find her, alive. Perhaps. I can understand how you must feel, senor. But I do not wish to encourage you. If I can be of any help to you, senora Pomley knows where to find me. Jose. That depressing man. I wonder what she was working on. anything. Beautiful. I beg your pardon? This job that she's done there, it's beautiful. And now she stumbled onto it, but it'll probably wind up being named after. What will? This current that she's plotted out on the chart. That's what your squiggles stand for, this current. See that uh, runs along the island here? Uh, let's see. Corner the scale, it's about uh, oh, half a mile out. It goes north about... Huh. About four miles, and then it stops. Well, that's funny. Well, why didn't she tell me anything about all this? It's not a military secret, is it? Where are notebooks are. Oh, what do you want them for? Oh, here they are. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be a record of her findings on uh, old tides and... Uh... Oh, here it is. See, uh, the wind velocity right there. Uh, water temperatures. Rate of drift. Her tanks. You know, her diving gear. Have you any idea what she's. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they're gone. Her wetsuit's gone. And so's a boat. Of course, that's what she's done. She's out there tracking this current. She hadn't finished her job. And she was too impatient to wait for me. And something went wrong? She can't be lost. Listen, a lot of people are lost at sea for a longer time than this and still survived. Just ordinary people. And Sherry isn't just ordinary people, huh? Come on, let's find that lieutenant. Him? Well, he's got a boat. Lieutenant Campos was skeptical and reluctant to make what he considered just one more search. But he had agreed to help. And he kept his word. Within an hour, we were heading out to sea in the police launch. I still think it's hopeless, huh? Let's see. Senorita Bishop was a remarkable woman, but three days in the ocean. But you were willing to come out and help us search. If the senora will pardon me, it is my duty to recover her body if I can. As near as I could figure it, we were a half a mile out now. Unless for some reason Sherry had charted a mythical current, my die marker should pick it up just about here. ran into me, a warm, insistent current that flowed north, just as Sherry's chart indicated. Sherry's current. So, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to trace it. With your help, I'll uh, set this float out ahead of us. Let the current carry it. And we'll follow it with your launch. Well, okay. You will do as you wish. <clears throat> Bring us up forward, huh? Yeah, sure. Lieutenant, get the binocs. Oh, 
Okay. Mike, is this going to work? I don't know what else to do. Just keep looking. Either for Sherry or for a boat. The float was attached to a weight of neutral buoyancy. I had adjusted the line so the weight would hang at the depth of Sherry's current. That way we could follow it on the surface from the launch. The float moved this way and that in response to the movements of the current. We navigated by the float, making every turn with it. But our overall course remained northward, like the vectors on Sherry's chart. We saw no sign of Sherry or her boat. I was beginning to wonder if Compass had been right, that we were on a hopeless mission. Suddenly, the float seemed to stop. The float, it has stopped. Does that mean that the current too has stopped? Well, I don't see how it could have all of a sudden like that. Maybe if I find out what happened to the current, I'll find out what happened to her. Give me that drift meter. Remember, Mr. Nelson, down there. We cannot help you. Yeah, I know. I followed the line down. It didn't take me long to see what had happened. The current flowed into a grotto, and through it too, I imagined. The line had snagged inside. I was careful entering the grotto but not careful enough. The current became a furious rapids. I lost control. I didn't dare think what must have happened to Sherry. I was losing hope of ever finding her. In fact, I was wondering if I would ever get back myself. Lieutenant Campos was beginning to believe that I was hopelessly lost. I had finally rolled clear of the powerful current which had pulled me miles from the launch. I still had seen no sign of Sherry Bishop. At last, I was able to surface. The only thing that I could see looked like a tiny island. Thank God you're alive. Come on. What, what's the matter? I think it's broken. OK. First thing we do is put that in a splint. Shouldn't take too long.
You never learn, do you? Boys have to do things all by yourself. She was pitifully weak, probably from exposure, hunger, and thirst. She had to have something to eat right away. There was only one place to get it, the ocean. So with a knife and a stick, I started to improvise a spear. I headed down with my improvised spear. I had to go fairly deep before I saw a fish. I wondered if I was getting groggy because the current seemed to be pulling the fish and me to the south. And yet, Sherry's current had pulled me due north. The water was colder here too. I pulled it off and dropped it in the current. I was right. It was a cold reverse current, below the warm one that had brought us to the island. I don't know which helped more, the food or you're finding that reverse current. I still can't believe it. Mike, how did you find me? I didn't see a plane or a bird or anything for three days. I thought I'd had it. You darn near did. Campos is waiting for us back there. We better get started. And the sooner, the better. Uh, take it easy now. Take it easy. Mike, I'm, I'm ready to go, really. Oh, no, you're not. What you need is some rest. Just got through eating. Got to digest it. I've been resting for days. Not really, I'll bet. What you need to do is relax completely. Why don't you try to sleep, huh? Come on. Put your head. Yeah, come on. Mind me. Put your feet out here. That's it. You sleep a bit. You feel a lot better. Hmm? Close your eyes. All right. If you think I'll go to sleep. Close your eyes. Come on, close them. Breathe deep. Breathe big. Real deep. Don't close your eyes. As soon as Sherry was asleep, I planned to ride the reverse current back to the launch. Then I'd come for Sherry. But by the time that I was ready to leave, Take me with you, please. I just can't do it, Sherry. But the current you found will take us right where we want to go. I know it will. What if it doesn't? You're in no shape to take this trip. Look, I'll be back in no time with Compass and his launch, huh? Mike, you can't leave me behind. You don't know what it's like being here all alone. Please, it Mike. Does it make sense with your broken arm and everything? Oh, please, Mike. How much air have you got in your tank? I had a full tank when I started. And what about now? You must have used up a lot of air getting here. No, it's too risky, Sherry. Oh, Mike, if you don't take me with you, I'll follow you. Please, Mike. Okay, you win. I had agreed to take Sherry back to the launch, but getting her there alive was another question. We started down, looking for the current that I had found that might take us in the right direction. And between us, we might be able to stretch our air far enough. Only I knew better. For now, though, I concentrated on finding that southbound current. The die marker indicated it unmistakably. We were on 
on our way. Sherry wasn't much help. She could hardly move, and she was in pain. We just had to let the current take us at its own speed. It moved along the bottom at a good rate and in the right direction. But the water was very cold, and that didn't help Sherry any. My big hope was that Compass and Fran had not given up and that they were waiting for us. At that moment, however, they were preparing to weigh anchor. Slowly, very slowly, the current started to move upward. And so did my hopes for Sherry. If only I could stretch our air supply further than it could normally go. Sherry ran out of air. We'd have to surface. If we did, the current would no longer carry us. We might even be carried northward, back to the island. I began sharing the air in my tanks with her. I knew that we'd have to go up any minute, and we might be miles from our destination. Suddenly, I saw the incredible, wonderful answer. I sighted the tow line of my float, still snagged inside the grotto. The launch would be directly overhead. It had to be. Against all odds, we had made it. What's the matter with you? Come here. You can make it to shore without me. Go on, Mike, go on. No, no, what do you mean, go on? I'm gonna stay here till Coppers comes back again for us. He's not coming back, he's not coming back. I know where he is. Stop it. Turn over your back. Jerry, this isn't like you. Listen, I know it's not going to help me cry. Feel this way? Look! Here they come! Oh, Mike, we can't stay there. No, I mean it. Look! Look! Watch out for her arm. Oh, oh, we found her. We found her alive. But I was not looking for her, senora. It was him, senor Nelson. I thought now we would find his body. Hello there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is fun and adventure for young and old, but it can be dangerous. So know the sport well and don't take any chances. Be with you next week for another exciting sea hunt.